no, please! Please! No! No, no! No, please! Please don't hurt her! It's just a child! Please! No! No! Not please! No! No! The dark side of the Force is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural. What did you do to it? What did you do to it? I, I protected him. I, I protected him. If it wasn't for me, he would already be dead. Please. Please. Please, please. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This is going to be my new Mandalorian video for the secret plan that the Empire has for Baby Yoda. Why do they want him so bad? If you're new to the channel, I do videos for all the episodes and Easter eggs. There's also big movie stuff obviously coming up because it's December as I'm posting this video. We're doing a merch giveaway too. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave your best theory about what the Emperor wants with Baby Yoda on the video. Cursory spoiler warning for everything that's happened on The Mandalorian so far. Most of what we're talking about deals with stuff from episodes 2 and 3, but there are a couple other clues from the other episodes as well. The most important Baby Yoda scenes so far in terms of evil empire plots and explaining what's going on are from episodes 2 and episodes 3. During episode 2, we get confirmation of a detail that we already kind of knew. Members of Yoda's race are all born extremely force sensitive. And even though he's still a baby by the standards of his race or a youngling, whatever you want to call him, he's already super powerful, holding the giant mud horn that probably weighs a hundred times what he does in the air for an extended period of time before he collapses from the strain. A lot of people at the end of episode 4 also thought that he would be able to use the force to instinctively deflect the bounty hunter's rifle shot, but I don't think that's the case. I think he's only able to perform those great feats like the Mudhorn when he concentrates very hard and even that put him down for about half a day. Yes, he does seem like he has ninja-like powers of teleportation and instant transmission if we're talking about Dragon Ball skills, appearing out of thin air to break the tension by slurping his soup. <sighs> Those are all really funny, but that's more of an editing cheat that the show uses in the name of comedy. During episode 1 and episode 3, you hear Dr. Pershing talk about the kid in a really important way. It was very important to him that he get him back alive and was extremely excited when his scans showed that he was super healthy, as if that would somehow be even better for the Empire's plans. Werner Herzog's character, who seems like an important person within the remnants of the Empire, seemed like he could care less whether or not Baby Yoda was brought back alive, and didn't seem like he was on very good terms with Dr. Pershing, like he didn't enjoy working with him. The way the Doctor was reacting to everything, especially during episode 1 when we first meet him, just makes it seem like he's really jumpy around the Stormtroopers, like he doesn't like being here working with these people, even though he himself is also part of the Empire. That coupled with the idea that he wanted to protect Baby Yoda just makes it seem like he has a more complicated relationship with the Empire. Yes, he works for an evil organization, but he's not completely evil himself. I think that'll be more important for later in the series. But we've all talked about the Kaminoan cloning symbols on Dr. Pershing's Imperial uniform, confirming that he works at the cloning facility for the Empire, or he worked there for the Empire when the Emperor was still alive. Technically, the Empire doesn't exist anymore. So while the admirals and higher level officials like the Moffs that were left in the wake of the remnants of the Empire have seized what power they could. So technically, the Empire is still around, but it's not the Empire that we knew before. It's a bunch of different people calling the shots. If you haven't read a lot of the extended new Star Wars canon, there are a bunch of new comics that tell you more of what happened in and around the Clone Wars. Supposedly, according to the new Darth Vader comics, it's detailed that after the Clone Wars and the last batch of Republic clones had been delivered, the plan was for the Emperor to formally shut down the cloning facility completely. No more clones for anyone. But cue Darth Plagueis the Wise speech. Did you ever hear the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? The Emperor was obsessed with a couple things. One, knowledge of the Force. Two, immortality. And three, ruling the galaxy. You need a couple things to accomplish all those goals. You need a giant army. And you would need more clones. There's even an Easter egg in the newer Star Wars films where they talk about the idea that they want to go back to using clones for their armies because they feel that they were more reliable than the methods that they're using in present day. The present day of the new films. So the whole idea is that all these Imperials left around want more clones, and the Emperor was supposed to quote unquote have closed the cloning facility, but I think we can assume that he probably didn't, and he just kept it open as a side project in secret. 
Some more evidence that the cloning facility has still been operating this whole time during the course of the original trilogy is that you look at the stormtroopers here five years after Return of the Jedi, look at their stormtrooper uniforms and how decrepit and dirty they are. Either they're just really crappy stormtroopers and they don't care about keeping their uniforms clean, or this is just meant to be a sign of the state of the Empire. Everything is slowly crumbling to dust. The Empire itself is crumbling. But Dr. Pershing is wearing this shiny, brand new looking Imperial cloning uniform as if he and the cloning facility beyond the Outer Rim have been operating this whole time insulated from the war with the Rebellion. I think that's just confirmation that the Emperor was running a lot of secret cloning tests and experiments on the side while this was all going on. So it's probably safe to assume that this is all part of Palpatine's grand plan, but when he died and you have all these warlords seizing power, a lot of Palpatine's secret projects were being co-opted by the admirals and the other moths that are left in the wake of the Empire. So here's a real important distinction. There are, I think, some things that are going on during Rise of Skywalker that seem similar to what they're implying is going on in The Mandalorian with Baby Yoda in this cloning facility. But because of what J.J. Abrams and John Favreau and Dave Filoni have said, I think that the Mandalorian TV show isn't directly going to connect with what's happening in Rise of Skywalker. It just seems like there's some similarities. And yes, I do think that Baby Yoda will survive into the future and become the future of the Jedi Order. But before we talk about secret Baby Yoda plans, I just don't think that Baby Yoda is going to show up during Rise of Skywalker and save the day. It's not going to be some deus ex machina or anything like that. Because Yoda's race is so powerful, the Emperor would have loved to have been able to study his biology in greater detail, but couldn't because Yoda would have discovered his secret too early and revealed him. And then once he was revealed as Darth Sidious, Yoda had sequestered himself secretly to Dagobah where the Emperor couldn't find him. On the other side of the galaxy, Yaddle had also disappeared after Phantom Menace and believed to be dead, so the Emperor couldn't find her either. And they were the only two known members of their race at that time. Now we know that's not true because Baby Yoda is about 50 years old, which means he was born at about the same time that Anakin Skywalker was, meaning that he predates the prequels and predates the creation of the clone army in Attack of the Clones, which is why I don't think that the kid is a clone of Yoda, but I do think that Dr. Pershing's conversation with Werner Herzog in Episode 3, where he tells the doctor to hurry up and get his samples, then dispose of the kid, implies that he's taking complete genetic scans of DNA from the kid in order to create a new clone army. Not necessarily a clone army of tiny little Yodas, even though that would be adorable. The Kaminoans were able to tamper with the genetic makeup of the original clones to give them traits or take traits away from them. I think the plans for what they were doing at the cloning facility changed after the galaxy believed the Emperor died during Return of the Jedi and the Imperials left who seized what power they could now want to use the cloning facility in Baby Yoda's DNA to create a new army of super Force-sensitive clones that they can control and clones that have super long lifespans, way longer than normal humans. I saw some people reacting to this scene in particular with him on the bio bed and thought that Dr. Pershing was literally extracting midichlorians from baby Yoda. That's not what he's doing. You can't take someone's midichlorians like you can take their blood samples, but you can clone Jedis. They did it during Legends during the Thrawn trilogy when the clone of another Jedi Master cloned a new version of Luke Skywalker using the severed hand that he lost to Cloud City that the Emperor collected and then later stored for use. The clone of Luke Skywalker, even though it was a little weird, wound up being just as force sensitive as the original version of Luke. And even though Legends isn't supposed to be canon anymore, Dave Filoni has recanonized a ton of Legends stuff, Thrawn being the best example. So it's just an example that it is possible to create a bunch of force sensitive clones if you have the right DNA samples. And Baby Yoda is one of the most force sensitive beings in the galaxy because of his race. But like I said, I don't think that what they're doing with Baby Yoda in the Mandalorian series is directly connected to what's going on with Rise of Skywalker. I think the Rise of Skywalker stuff is completely separate. For everyone asking what's going on with Baby Yoda in the present day of the Star Wars timeline, you also have to remember that they age so slowly that even in present day, 25 plus years when the new trilogy is happening, he'd still be very, very young. He'd have to be closer to 80 or 100 years old before he'd be old enough to begin any kind of formal Jedi training or anything like that. And you have to remember, too, there is no Jedi Order right now. There are just a couple of really Force-sensitive people that will probably slowly start coming together and rebuild the Jedi Order. But I do think that he is critical to the future of the Jedi, just someone who can live and connect all the different future generations because he'll live so long. 
You also have to wonder if Giancarlo Esposito's Moff Gideon character is the one that's behind this big cloning plot because he used to be an Imperial Moff before the fall of the Empire. Now as Gina Carano's character implies, he's more of a warlord who's just taking command of all the Imperial assets that he could in the sector. So maybe he is the evil person behind this plot because Werner Herzog's character, even though he seems like he's a very important person, doesn't seem like the most important person. We still haven't gotten his name, but he is still alive. He wasn't killed at the end of episode three, so it's implied that he will come back at some point. Early prediction, they do get their hands on Baby Yoda at some point and Dr. Pershing is critical to them rescuing Baby Yoda and he winds up flipping sides before the end of the series. But everyone post all your theories in the comments below what is their grand plan for the cloning facility and baby Yoda. There'll be more Mandalorian bonus videos this week. Post all your requests in the comments below. Congratulations Gage Williams. You're the giveaway winner from my last big video. Please email me on the about page of my channel so I can get your contact details. Everyone click here for my Mandalorian episode 4 video and click here for my full history on the Mandalorian race. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.